chapter 10 microbes in human welfare you can see in the figure 10.1a there are rod shaped bacteria which is magnified 1500 times and here so rod, rod shaped bacteria means bacillus then in figure b you can see spherical shaped bacteria that is coccus so they are magnified 1500 times and the figure c shows one rod rod shaped bacteria and with flagella that is magnified 50000 times this figure 10.2 there are various viruses figure a shows a bacteriophage with structure head collar tail plate pins and these are prongs for the attachment on bacteria then the figure b shows adenovirus that causes respiratory infections figure c shows rod shaped tobacco mosaic virus magnified up about to 1 lakh 50000 times and they are rod shaped viruses in this figure 10.3 a shows colonies of bacteria they are growing in the growth medium in petri dish and this is fungal colony that is also growing in a growth medium which is present in petri dish in chapter 8 you have read that microbes cause a large number of diseases in human beings they also cause diseases in animals and plants but this should not make you think that all microbes are harmful. Several microbes are useful to man in diverse ways. Some of the most important contributions of microbes to human welfare are discussed in this chapter. Microbes in household products. You would be surprised to know that we use microbes or products derived from them every day. A common example is the production of curd from milk. Microorganisms such as lactobacillus and others commonly called lactic acid bacteria grow in milk and convert it to curd. During growth, lactic acid bacteria produce acids that coagulate and partially digest the milk proteins. A small amount of curd added to the fresh milk as inoculum or starter contain millions of lactic acid bacteria which at suitable temperatures multiply thus converting milk to curd which also improves its nutritional quality by increasing vitamin B12. In our stomach too, the lactic acid bacteria play a very beneficial role in checking disease-causing microbes. The dough which is used for making foods such as dosa and idli is also fermented by bacteria. The puffed up appearance of dough is due to the production of carbon dioxide gas. Can you tell which metabolic pathway is taking place resulting in the formation of carbon dioxide? Where do you think the bacteria for these fermentations came from? Similarly, the dough which is used for making bread is fermented using baker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. A number of traditional drinks and foods are also made by fermentation by the microbes. Toddy, a traditional drink of some parts of southern India, is made by fermenting sap from palms. Microbes are also used to ferment fish, soybean, and bamboo shoots to make foods. Cheese is one of the oldest food items in which microbes were used. Different varieties of cheese are known by their characteristic texture, flavor and taste. The specificity coming from the microbes used. For example, the large holes in Swiss cheese 
due to production of a large amount of carbon dioxide by a bacterium named Propioni bacterium charmani. The Roquefort teas are ripened by growing a specific fungi on them, which gives them a particular flavor. Microbes in industrial products. Even in industry, microbes are used to synthesize a number of products valuable to human beings. Beverages and antibiotics are some examples. Production on an industrial scale requires growing microbes in very large vessels called fermenters. Fermented beverages. Microbes, especially yeast, have been used from time immemorial for the production of beverages like wine, beer, whiskey, brandy or rum. For this purpose, the same yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, used for bread making and commonly called brewer's yeast, is used for fermenting malted cereals and fruit juices to produce ethanol. Depending on the type of the raw material used for fermentation and the type of processing with or without distillation, different types of alcoholic drinks are obtained. Wine and beer are produced without distillation whereas whiskey, brandy and rum are produced by distillation of the fermented broth. The photograph of a fermentation plant is shown in figure 10.5. This is the figure of a fermentation plant. And this figure shows the fermenters. And antibiotics. Antibiotics produced by microbes are regarded as one of the most significant discoveries of the 20th century and have greatly contributed towards the welfare of the human society. Anti is a Greek word that means against and bio means life. Together they mean against life in the context of disease-causing organisms. Whereas with reference to human beings, they are pro-life and not against. Antibiotics are chemical substances which are produced by some microbes and they can kill or retard the growth of other disease-causing microbes. You are familiar with the commonly used antibiotic penicillin. Do you know that penicillin was the first antibiotic to be discovered and it was a chance discovery. Alexander Fleming, while working on staphylococci bacteria, once observed a mold growing in one of his unwashed culture plates, around which staphylococci could not grow. He found out that it was due to a chemical produced by the mold and he named it penicillin. After the mold, penicillium notatum. However, its full potential as an effective antibiotic was established much later by Ernest Chain and Howard Florey. This antibiotic was extensively used to treat American soldiers wounded in World War II. Fleming, Chain and Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 for this discovery. After penicillin, other antibiotics were also purified from other microbes. Antibiotics have greatly improved our capacity to treat deadly diseases such as plague, whooping cough, diphtheria and leprosy, which used to kill millions all over the globe. Today, we cannot imagine a world without antibiotics. Chemicals, enzymes and other bioactive molecules. Microbes are also used for commercial and industrial production of certain chemicals like organic acids, alcohols and enzymes. Examples of acid producers are Aspergillus niger, a fungus, of citric acid, Acetobacter acetae, a bacterium of acetic acid, Clostridium butylicum, a bacterium of butyric acid, and Lactobacillus, a bacterium of lactic acid. Yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, is used for commercial production of ethanol. 
Microbes are also used for production of enzymes. Lipases are used in detergent formulations and are helpful in removing oily stains from the laundry. You must have noticed that bottled fruit juices bought from the market are clearer as compared to those made at home. This is because bottled juices are clarified by the use of pectinases and proteases. Streptokinase produced by the bacterium Streptococcus and modified by genetic engineering is used as a clot buster. For removing clots from the blood vessels of patients who have undergone myocardial infarction leading to heart attack. Another bioactive molecule cyclosporin A that is used as an immunosuppressive agent in organ transplant patients is produced by the fungus Trichoderma polysporum. Statins produced by the yeast Monascus purpureus have been commercialized as blood cholesterol lowering agents. It acts by competitively inhibiting the enzyme responsible for the synthesis of cholesterol. Microbes and sewage treatment. We know that large quantities of waste water are generated every day in cities and towns. A major component of this waste water is human excreta. This municipal waste water is also called sewage. It contains large amounts of organic matter and microbes, many of which are pathogenic. Have you ever wondered where this huge quantity of sewage or urban wastewater is disposed of daily? This cannot be discharged into natural water bodies like rivers and streams directly. You can understand why. Before disposal, hence sewage is treated in sewage treatment plants to make it less polluting. Treatment of wastewater is done by the heterotrophic microbes naturally present in the sewage. Treatment is carried out in two stages. Primary treatment. These treatment steps basically involve physical removal of particles large and small from the sewage through filtration and sedimentation. These are removed in stages. Initially, floating debris is removed by sequential filtration. Then, the grit, that is soil and small pebbles, are removed by sedimentation. All the solids that settle form primary sludge, and the supernatant forms the effluent. The effluent from the primary settling tank is taken for secondary treatment. Secondary treatment or biological treatment. The primary effluent is passed into large aeration tanks as in the figure 10.6 where it is constantly agitated mechanically and air is pumped into it. This allows vigorous growth of useful aerobic microbes into flocks. Masses of bacteria associated with fungal filaments to form mesh-like structures. While growing, these microbes consume the major part of organic matter in the effluent. This significantly reduces the BOD, that is biochemical oxygen demand of the effluent. BOD refers to the amount of oxygen that would be consumed if all the organic matter in one liter of water were oxidized by the bacteria. The sewage water is treated till the BOD is reduced. The BOD test measures the rate of uptake of oxygen by microorganisms in a sample of water and thus indirectly BOD is a measure of organic matter present in the water. The greater the BOD of wastewater, more is its polluting potential. Once the BOD of sewage or wastewater is reduced significantly, the effluent is then passed into a settling tank where the bacterial flocks are allowed to sediment. This sediment is called activated sludge. A small part of activated sludge is pumped back into the aeration tank to serve as inoculum. The remaining major part of sludge is pumped into large tanks called anaerobic sludge digesters. Here, other kinds of bacteria which grow anaerobically 
digest the bacteria and the fungi in the sludge. During this digestion, bacteria produces a mixture of gases such as methane, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. These gases form biogas and can be used as source of energy as it is inflammable. Effluent from the secondary treatment plant is generally released into natural water bodies like rivers and streams. An aerial view of such a plant is shown in the figure 10.7. You can appreciate how microbes play a major role in treating millions of gallons of wastewater every day across the globe. This methodology has been practiced for more than a century now in almost all parts of the world. Till date, no man-made technology has been able to rival the microbial treatment of sewage. You are aware that due to increasing urbanization, sewage has been produced in much larger quantities than ever before. However, the number of sewage treatment plants has not increased enough to treat such large quantities. So the untreated sewage is often discharged directly into rivers, leading to their pollution and increase in waterborne diseases. The Ministry of Environment and Forest has initiated Ganga Action Plan and Yamuna Action Plan to save these major rivers of our country from pollution. Under these plans, it is proposed to build a large number of sewage treatment plants so that only treated sewage may be discharged into the rivers. A visit to a sewage treatment plant situated in any place near you would be very interesting and educating experience. Microbes in production of biogas. Biogas is a mixture of gases containing predominantly methane produced by the microbial activity and which may be used as fuel. You have learned that microbes produce different types of gaseous end products during growth and metabolism. The type of the gas produced depends upon the microbes and the organic substrates they utilize. In the examples cited in relation to fermentation of dough, cheese making and production of beverages, the main gas produced was carbon dioxide. However, certain bacteria which grow anaerobically on cellulosic material produce a large amount of methane along with carbon dioxide and hydrogen. These bacteria are collectively called methanogens and one such common bacterium is methanobacterium. These bacteria are commonly found in the anaerobic sludge during sewage treatment. These bacteria are also present in the rumen, a part of stomach of cattle. A lot of cellulosic material present in the food of cattle is also present in the rumen. In rumen, these bacteria help in the breakdown of cellulose and play an important role in the nutrition of cattle. Do you think we human beings are able to digest the cellulose present in our foods? Thus, the excreta of cattle, dung, commonly called goober, is rich in these bacteria. Dung can be used for generation of biogas, commonly called goober gas. The biogas plant consists of a concrete tank, 10 to 15 feet deep, in which bio waste are collected and a slurry of dung is fed. A floating cover is placed over the slurry which keeps on rising as a gas is produced in the tank due to the microbial activity. The biogas plant has an outlet which is connected to a pipe to supply biogas to nearby houses. The spent slurry is removed through another outlet and may be used as fertilizer. Cattle dung is available in large quantities in rural areas where cattle are used for a variety of purposes. So, biogas plants are more often built in rural areas. The biogas thus produced is used for cooking and lighting. 
The picture of a biogas plant is shown in figure 10.8. So this is a typical biogas plant in figure 10.8. The dung and mixed with water that is a slurry is fed in through a tube to the digester and then there is gas holder which keeps up and up when there is a production of these biogas which involves methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and the gas is emptied through another tube and it can be supplied to houses and the spent sludge is collected out through another outlet and that can be used as fertilizer. The technology of biogas production was developed in India mainly due to the efforts of Indian Agricultural Research Institute IARI and Khadi and Village Industries Commission KVIC. If your school is situated in a village or near a village, it would be very interesting to inquire if there are any biogas plants nearby. Visit the biogas plant and learn more about it from the people who are actually managing it. Microbes as biocontrol agents. Biocontrol refers to the use of biological methods for the controlling plant disease and pests. In modern society, these problems have been tackled increasingly by the use of chemicals, by use of insecticide and pesticides. These chemicals are toxic and extremely harmful to human beings and animals alike and have been polluting our environment, soil, groundwater, fruits, vegetables and crop plants. Our soil is also polluted through our use of weedy sites to remove weeds. Biological control of pests and diseases. In agriculture, there is a method of controlling pests that relies on natural predation rather than introduced chemicals. A key belief of the organic farmer is that biodiversity furthers health. The more variety a landscape has, the more sustainable it is. The organic farmer therefore works to create a system where the insects that are sometimes called pests are not eradicated but instead they are kept at manageable levels by a complex system of checks and balances within a living and vibrant ecosystem. Contrary to the conventional farming practices which often use chemical methods to kill both useful and harmful life forms indiscriminately, this is a holistic approach that seeks to develop an understanding of the webs of interaction between the myriad of organisms that constitute the field fauna and flora. The organic farmer holds a view that the eradication of the creatures that are often described as pests is not only possible but are also undesirable. For Without them, the beneficial predatory and parasitic insects, which depend upon them as food or host, would not be able to survive. Thus, the use of biocontrol measures will greatly reduce our dependence on toxic chemicals and pesticides. An important part of the biological farming approach is to become familiar with the various life forms that inhabit the field, predators as well as pests, and also their life cycles patterns of feeding and the habitats that they prefer. This will help develop appropriate means of biocontrol. The very familiar beetle with red and black markings, the ladybird and dragonflies are useful to get rid of aphids and mosquitoes respectively. An example of microbial biocontrol agent that can be introduced in order to control butterfly caterpillars is the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis often written as Bt. These are available in sachets as dried spores which are mixed with water and sprayed onto vulnerable plants such as brassicas and fruit trees where these are eaten by the insect larvae. In the gut of the larvae the toxin is released and the larvae get killed. The bacterial disease will kill the caterpillars. But leave other insects unharmed. Because of the development of methods of genetic engineering in the last decade or so, 
the scientists have introduced Bacillus thuringiensis toxic genes into plants. Such plants are resistant to attack by insect pests. Bt cotton is one such example, which is being cultivated in some states of our country. A biological control being developed for use in the treatment of plant disease is the fungus Trichoderma. Trichoderma species are free-living fungi that are very common in the root ecosystems. They are effective biocontrol agents of several plant pathogens. Baculoviruses are pathogens that attack insects and other arthropods. The majority of baculoviruses used as biological control agents are in the genus Nucleopolyhedrovirus. These viruses are excellent candidates for species-specific narrow-spectrum insecticidal applications. They have been shown to have no negative impacts on plants, animals, birds, fish or even as even on non-target insects. This is especially desirable when beneficial insects are being conserved to aid in an overall integrated pest management program or when an ecologically sensitive area is being treated. Microbes as biofertilizers. With our present day lifestyles, environmental pollution is a major cause of concern. The use of the chemical fertilizers to meet the ever increasing demand of agricultural produce has contributed significantly to this pollution. Of course, we have now realized that there are problems associated with the overuse of chemical fertilizers and there is a large pressure to switch to organic farming, the use of biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are organisms that enrich the nutrient quality of the soil. The main source of biofertilizers are bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. You have studied about the nodules on the roots of leguminous plants formed by the symbiotic association of rhizobium. These bacteria fix atmospheric nitrogen into organic forms which is used by the plant as nutrient. Other bacteria can fix atmospheric nitrogen while free living in the soil. For example, Azospirillum azotobacter, thus enriching the nitrogen content of the soil. Fungi are also known to form symbiotic associations with plants, mycorrhiza. Many members of the genus Glomus form mycorrhiza. The fungal symbiont in these associations absorbs phosphorus from the soil and passes it to the plant. Plants having such associations show other benefits also, such as resistance to root-borne pathogens, tolerance to salinity and drought, and an overall increase in plant growth and development. Cyanobacteria are autotrophic microbes widely distributed in aquatic and terrestrial environments, many of which can fix atmospheric nitrogen. For example, anabina, nostoc, oscillatoria, etc. In paddy fields, cyanobacteria serve as an important biofertilizer. Blue-green algae also add organic matter to the soil and increase fertility. Currently in our country, a number of biofertilizers are available commercially in the market and farmers use these regularly in their fields to replenish soil nutrients and to reduce dependence on chemical fertilizers.